not the one that Ooh, has. this is a question I like to ask art people too. If you were not an art major, what would you be doing? Therapist. Really? Mm -hmm. You too. Hi, you guys. Welcome back to my channel, Art's Way Out. We are back with Leroy for the activity portion of the interview. And for today's video, he is going to play a little something. And then we yeah. are going to make an abstract piece of whatever mm. we see. So mm. <laughs> we'll see what happens. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he's not an artist by trade. Yeah. He doesn't. Do you draw? No? I used to like in eighth grade. Okay. Okay. So eighth you know, I was like, I was like, well, um, yeah. it ain't gonna happen no more. <laughs> we'll see what happens. But yeah, we just gonna make whatever we see or feel. Yeah. Cool. Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, you was already in the zone. No, I was just gonna close my eyes first. Oh. So I can't really visualize it oh, okay, okay. before you start. Okay. Okay, ready? Like based off of tune. Okay. Right. It was called It Never Entered My Mind. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, so what what colors were you seeing? Mm. I have lots of choices. Jesus Christ. Look at this. Colors. This is my favorite thing. If you know me, you know mm. how much I love organization. So <laughs> I have lots of colors. Cool. A song of longing. In yeah, my I felt it. So it's mm -hmm. like I don't know, I think of like darker color like blue, like a dark mm -hmm. blue. Almost like um color like red because like it's just like a sense of like love yeah. happening and towards the end it was like i don't know there was like a abruptness kind of mm. so i was thinking orange mm. orange mm. Mm -hmm. because it wasn't like a happy but it was no. like it was like an upbeat sad <laughs> that makes sense <laughs> it almost like a looking towards the future in a way yeah yeah, yeah. And Wait, so you said it was called It Never Entered My Mind. It Never Entered My Mind. I like that a lot. By Richard Rogers. Mm. And Lorenz Hart. Wow. Richard Rogers. A night came from the 1940 Broadway show. Wow. So you know a lot about your music. I mean, every every time like I learn a tune, I always have to I always like try to make sure I know who wrote it. Mm -hmm. Like, um the different like uh what's the, not variations, but uh um, recordings of it. Mm -hmm. Try to check out like all the different types. I try to know like when was the first like recording of it or in. Ah. So like, you have like a lot of context behind the music. I know. try to, and like, I try, good. I try to learn the lyrics to like tunes like that has mm. like a beautiful set of oh, lyrics. Oh, so it's a whole song. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like a, that's cool. And the lyrics to it are like beautiful because it's like mm. it's like a song about like somebody that used to be there or used to have and now is gone, mm -hmm. and never into your mind that you thought they would be ever gone from you. Yeah. Ah! Exactly. That yeah, that goes deep. Mm. It adds more when you play because then it's like it really is like you can you the more you feel and know about the music, mm -hmm. you know, the more you're able to express your emotions through it. Yeah, you know? that makes sense though, because you with the if you're just playing just to play the music and exactly. you don't know the context. You don't know the, you're then you're not playing. saying anything, yeah. yeah. Same thing with art, like you know, it's kinda like you want to know yes with commission pieces especially um i do t i do tattoo designs too so like i try to get the personality of the person mm -hmm. and not just you know what kind of stuff they like um and if you don't know the context of that individual it's like you're making art for anybody exactly and that's that's why when i play it's like i'm trying to show as much as like myself mm -hmm. through with the music and the more you know understand too the more you're able to express yourself through it mm -hmm. so that's that's always the goal. This is a very good lineup. I don't know if you guys see this. <laughs> well, no, wait. this is a very like nice assortment of colors. Tony? Yes, yes. This looks very nice. Oh. Like it's just aesthetically pleasing. It's, that's the believe the best thing. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Making like a backdrop. Uh -huh. Do you keep it in one direction or does it matter? Hmm. Like, it, it it depends on what you're going for. What kind of feelings are you feeling in the background? I'm thinking like like I'm trying to do like a all black background mm -hmm. like so if you just want it solid then yeah go in all in one direction okay but let's say the black for you represents like 
belonging and loss, then you could do something with the texture. Of it. I was thinking like doing like slightly different directions because yeah, yeah. Or if it's just like a mess of emotions, then you yeah. can make a mess of it and see the texture. That's why I was thinking because mm -hmm. that's like the whole. Mm, yes, that's everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because you can do. That's the thing about art. It's just like it just depends. Same thing with music. It's just mm -hmm. no take should ever be the same mm -hmm. whenever you play you yeah. should never play exactly the same way i mean you never really should or attempt to you know mm -hmm. then it's not authentic right, right you know so you learn your techniques and you learn like it's a quote-unquote like grammar of what you're doing you know yeah yeah but at the end of the day that should never just be a copy and paste yeah no because that's just it's not it's, that's not human like no, it's just like i mean if that human. was the case we could just hire a robot exactly music, it's not human When's the last time you painted for real for real? Mm, never. Really? <laughs> this is your first elementary school. Wow. I have one of those. You should just paint to paint. It's just fun. Oh, I, I love it. But mm. I'm I'm I have one of those um what you call it? I don't know if you, from if where you grew up, like they had like a art showcase for like elementary schoolers and stuff. Yeah, it is is it like the scholastic art awards type thing? Or? Uh sort of like those like they will showcase the the uh, like um school art, like different mm -hmm. students from around the county and like the the mall. Yeah. Tell, yeah. Okay. Well, no, we don't have them all. <laughs> but yeah, I can see. Yeah. yeah we, that's cool. We, well, I got the the, the uh, like in fifth grade, uh, like two of my pieces mm -hmm. got displayed. Wow. Yeah, okay. I, uh, what was your pieces? Of? I barely remember. I think one was like <laughs> some type of turtle, and then one was like oh, one was cute. like a mask or something. Yeah. That was like. I mean, it looked pretty good. I think I have it home. Oh, but that's cool. That thing is long gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't remember them. I feel like we should show the camera where we're at so far. Oh God, can't see. I have nothing. <laughs> we weren't even supposed to show each other, but it's like, we're right beside each it's, other. Okay, so. yeah. But um, it never entered my mind. For me, that came up was like, that's something I never thought of, yeah, but it's a prep. If it never hit your mind. Yeah, it was like one of those students where it's like, you, like one of those, I think, phrases or meanings that's like, you never thought that you would be without that person. Yeah. Without, or, you know, and you never thought that you would be having those thoughts and feelings, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's, first of all, it's an interruption and it's an unexpected one. It's an unexpected and not so, wanted. Yeah, not wanted. So yeah. that's a good word. And a longing so, for you, for that person to be back. Yeah. You know? So with that, I took that as like, I'm seeing a lot of dark colors and this form right here is the thing that you're not expecting mm. and y'all can't you probably like what is this but yes this this right here this is going to be a certain color but this is the train of thought and you can kind of see like this arrow right here yeah so we're thinking in one direction right mm. you're not even accounting for this right here mm. so yeah okay, okay. <laughs> I dig, I dig. Ooh, thank you i like how you went mm. all the way for it oh yeah that's you're gonna I, cover the whole thing that's what i do i just yeah, yeah. <laughs> i don't even <laughs> i mm -hmm. just decide and go yep yep i don't have time to be like well sorry i got <laughs> yeah, I, the, you just gotta go. the paintbrush just <laughs> flew off my little thing <laughs> you know what a photograph a photograph does for like nature it mm -hmm. captures it in that moment in that moment we're capturing the music in this one mm -hmm. <laughs> i should be capturing the music mm -hmm. And you have a different perspective too, because oh, you played it. I just heard it. Mm, true. So you so. can you can paint from a perspective of you know knowing the context and like actually playing it. It's like my approach is like I'm thinking of the colors more than like the shape I'm drawing, mm -hmm. and like what each color is Means, representing. Yeah. So what are you feeling with the red? The red to me is like, and is that the beginning of the song, or just you're thinking about the song in completion? I feel like I'm thinking about like the song in like as a whole, mm -hmm. and the red is like representing like the feeling of love and loss. Okay, you know, yeah, yeah together. Yeah. That's cool. So it's like that. the reason why it's at the top is like that's the most prominent feeling. Ooh, that's so, yeah. It's like that's good though. Yeah. I'm symbolism trying, yeah i'm trying to see where i want to go with it mm -hmm. but just slowly figure it out yeah 
for me, I'm thinking about the song in sequence. Mm. So at the beginning, I was seeing a lot of blues, literally. Yeah. And then as it was going towards the end, like I said, there was like an upbeat sadness. Mm. So I'm seeing orange, like a ba dun ba dun ba dun ba dun ba dun ba dun so I don't even remember if we got to talk about it in the interview, but how is classes for a musician right now? Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> That's for all art students when I tell you. It's um, like, it's just, it's like I'm making, you know, it's, I just really miss playing with people regularly and like mm -hmm. having those, even though they used to be, you know, so much work sometimes, yeah. you know, but just the feeling of like playing with people again, making music with people yeah. on a regular basis. I miss that like so much. Mm -hmm. That too, it's like, it's different playing by yourself, I imagine. Oh yeah, it's no one near the same. Like, you mm -hmm. can like, right now I'm trying to focus on like getting better. Right. But <laughs> it's like, you know, playing with people is like a whole nother level of like your development, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, you're only so far you can go with just playing records and learning tunes and right. you know like, there's only so far you can go by yourself yeah and like you know especially we call, like if you're used to playing in like a uh, group setting. yeah like and the, there's so much you learn while playing on stage mm -hmm. like so much you learn you know so and it was like as an artist it's like you know not the same because like you know you're able to just work on your craft like whenever you can like you don't have as much other people involvement yeah you know but like with this music like especially playing like playing a lot of commercial like or jazz music mm -hmm. you know that's a social music so that's true you know what i feel like one time we were talking about like the social aspect of jazz yeah. and how important it is to play it in front of a, like a live audience it's a whole different experience i mean live yes. music, live music in general so much i will tell you the one um the one performance that i went to with you i was just like i don't know if it's the type of vibe but i'm one to like cheer and like, like yeah no that's what we you want turn it up in the audience but that's what like, i that's that's i mean those are so recitals so i know but yeah, I, yeah. I i'm talking where so i want you to like let if you like like if i'm playing at a bar yeah. i don't care about if people are talking or not paying yeah, attention yeah. it's like i want to add to to atmosphere and like if somebody gets engaged that night and yeah. i'm playing a song that's like perfect for that setting yeah and then yeah. And somebody waited so I, i'll play like and then that means i added to their moment right you right know? and you can vibe with people exactly and then that See? means forever in their whole life that yeah. that, that moment is going to be like I, I was a part of it yeah that's know? cool that's cool so even though like i don't need to be the center of attention for that you know the music is is meant to be in a social situation mm -hmm. it's, not, it's meant to be dance music it's meant to be like it's not meant to be like I mean, we just sitting and listen yeah i mean that's what that's, and that has its own place yeah you know? yeah definitely but the, there's a go ahead no i'm saying like it's the original like origins of this music uh -huh. was that it was meant to be played around people right you know and then it developed more into being a more professional or more like sit down you know and that's great too but mm -hmm. it's like you gotta remember like the feeling of like wanting to get up and dance you know like this yeah. is the, the reason why you listen to this music and it's like makes you want to get up mm -hmm. or just well, i just play you know like where just like the feeling of longing mm -hmm. you know so it's like so much human expression and emotions go into like this music so you know when I play it and are playing, you know, in a live setting, it's like mm -hmm. you truly can feel that. Yeah. Way more than like just singing it. Record's great, but like right. hearing it in front of you. Um, I've been to a classical setting where you do just sit and listen. And mm -hmm. then I've been to settings where like you're supposed to interact. Yeah. Um I prefer to Oh, hundred percent. But I, um it's hard for me to sit down. Yeah, I love it's just like I get so excited, so it's like this isn't the place I'm, I live and I'm on the your type, best behavior. I make sound a lot of sounds when I listen to music. Uh -huh. Like I make too many sounds. Right. <laughs> I'll be making like grunts and like, you know, just yeah. like written. So it's like I can only classical music is great and I love it. Mm -hmm. You know, it has its own but like sitting down and listening to it like at a concert is always tough for me because I just like Yeah. You know, I say so. I'll be like saying a random sound, like, ooh, and then yeah, somebody turns yeah. around, and looks at me, yeah, right? And I'm like, oh my god, you yeah, know. Yeah, but like you said, it has a place because it just depends the type of music. If it is very much like subtle, mm -hmm. then I guess there's not as much need for interaction. But even then, I'm just like, exactly. That was good. That was great. That was good. That's what I'm I saying. could be listening to Mozart and just be like, yeah, and be vibe like. That's awesome. I uh, really enjoyed this. I need to paint more. It is so, it's so relaxing. relaxing. Yeah. And just to paint stuff without really thinking of Yeah, not all. judging yourself yeah, as you yeah. do it. Yeah. That's the most, I feel like that's the way I've learned the most is just um, painting just to it. paint, not painting for an outcome. Mm. 
painting the plate. Pl paint. Yes, there we go. To the I said, plate. I said. <laughs> <laughs> painting to paint, yeah. Mm. Okay. It's happening slowly. It is. It is. Slowly. It'll come together. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe the white. So maybe, because you're only looking at. So like mm -hmm. the white can be like the past where mm -hmm. there was no, like, you know, we associate whiteness, like white, the color white with like clarity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the red can be the sense of lost and like love, you know? Mm -hmm. And then this is like, in the middle is like, the connections, I guess. Between the, the two. Between yeah. the two, yeah. So this is like. And so I need before. to add something, yeah, like, yeah. that like differentiates to where, like, this is like the before. Mm -hmm. And then this can be like the after. Yeah. Or like. And this is like the transition to Yeah. To or that. maybe this is like, it never entered my mind. So this is like the connection of the brain. Or like the it's, feeling. It's the the, yeah. Y'all, I used to be a psych major. The synapses. Yeah. The synapses <laughs> gap. Okay. Yeah. The neurons. Yeah, yes. this is like the emotions. But connection. yeah, I can see that. As soon as you said like the brain, I was like, yeah, this is like the synapses. Yeah. You know synapses. what? I, yeah, so, yeah, we in there. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Synapses, Syn I, synaptic. I'm, I'm, yeah. I stutter every five seconds. <laughs> I'm not the one. To Ooh, ask. this is a question I like to ask art people too. If you were not an art major, what would you be doing? Therapist. Really? Mm -hmm. Me too. Yeah. I love that's why I started too. as a. That's why I started as a psych major. Yeah. Oh yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I came in as a second major. I remember. Yeah, sure did. I was like, I would definitely be like a therapist. Something that has to do with like just talking to people mm -hmm. and like helping. Yeah, people. just engaging with people. Exactly. I could talk to people all day. All day, you know. Because mm -hmm. I always just like wonder what people go through. Yeah. And, like, you never know. You, you never know. Just looking at people, you never know. And to be able to like just even just, just be a listening like a, but like be able just to listen to somebody mm -hmm. and even just help them out just from you listening yeah i don't know that means a lot to me while i'm able to like help somebody through something mm -hmm. so and that too like even with this channel like um i was really i was going over the first part of the interview just watching it and it's mm -hmm. like that could really inspire somebody especially the part where you were talking about um being an individual outside of your art no gotcha you know? god because sometimes it can consume i got you. so yeah because that's a personal experience because mm -hmm. like i got so depressed like my freshman year of school because well first semester particularly because mm -hmm. i was just so i'm around all these people that are like i feel like are so much better than me right one. and that comparison that comparison will really kills you, yeah it will take you out that's quickly. what i mean i refuse i don't ever compare myself I, yeah. I i look at myself i'm just thankful to be around people that are so talented yeah and yeah. if i hear somebody as like you know, better, so-called better than me, yeah. you know. I'm just thankful to be able to be, be able to make music with them. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is, most of the time, people are comparing themselves to you, too, and it's just like, don't Yeah, do everybody's yeah, comparing yeah. themselves to each other, and that's yeah. the thing. Like, even the people that you think are so good, and mm -hmm. they, they have, still, they still you know, they could be comparing themselves and thinking they're not nothing, you know? Yeah, yeah. So. Because do, do you ever run into people who are so talented, and they just will not, yeah, for, give the, it, for mm -hmm. the world, be yeah. like, yes. Or give I them that this. that like I, I I can I'm talented. Yeah, I, I yeah, it's st it always down on themselves. I'm always. Like, do you do you know yourself? Do you listen to yourself? Do you, yeah. Do you and, see what you're doing? And that's why I'm just like there are people that are so talented that will be so down in the dumps. Yeah. Because they just they devalue their art and mm -hmm. they, and then they end up devaluing themselves. Yeah, and I think that's why people get into the place where they do art for so long and then eventually it's like burnout. Like mm -hmm. I don't even like this anymore. And we talked we touched a little bit about it um in the interview, but it's just like some people will do something for so long mm -hmm. and then realize that they don't even really like it. Exactly. And I mean, I, I don't think I'll ever reach that point with music yeah, just because like I know like the, it's like when you, the people that really reached out are the ones that have just lost lost their passion for it. Yeah. And and don't and forget why they even did it in the first place, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And that's like, ooh, sorry, I had an idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I feel like just like we talked about that last time, like rem mm -hmm. always remember like why you did this, you know, mm -hmm. why you ever picked up a paintbrush for the first time, yeah. why you ever wanted to pick up an you instrument. You have to hold on to that. You have to. And you use some water too if you want to clean your brushes. I definitely do. These are all over the place. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got the paint right here. But that was like, that's why I'm always like big about taking care of myself, like going mm -hmm. to work out, you know, and yeah. stay and on. Yeah, having time outside of Got to. Yeah, your passion. I have to. Because as fun as like art is and as fun as like, I'm sure like you enjoy playing. Yeah. Stuff, you still got to have time love for it. yourself. But I got to like give myself, like I feel like if I don't, 
go do things like working out, you know, mm -hmm. just spending time like watching like shows that I like, you know, go doing other things. I really enjoy cooking. So, oh, you know, like going to cook, like, you know, like finding a new recipe to, to mess with and stuff like that, reading a book, like, you know, things like giving myself time to do things like that is like so important to me, you know, because mm -hmm. like my, my physical health you know correlates directly with my mental health yeah so if absolutely. i'm not taking care of myself that's a fact. That's, yeah <laughs> there's so many like disorders that are that can be caused i'm not going to say that all of them are caused by you know your mental health but um your physical well-being is affected by your mental well-being. oh 100 i mean i know that for a fact you know mm -hmm. especially like you know like with me like going through like my weight loss like mm -hmm. it's like my mental health has like never been better right. because of just like I'm so big about like just taking care of myself and mm -hmm. you know not the fact that oh I just feel like I look good it's just the fact that I know that I'm taking like, care of yourself, yeah, yeah I can feel it you know mm -hmm. like yeah I think that too like there's a feeling that comes with like exercising regularly oh and I'm trying to get back on it but it's just like I can feel like after a week if I've worked out for a certain period of time like during the summer I was working out consistently mm -hmm. but then when you go that week. Um, like when school starts and you're not working out, like I can feel it. Like mm -hmm. I, can, I can feel it. I go in my like spirit. I mean, I go like five days out the week, so it's yeah. like I if, when I'm off like a week or just. And it's also like an accomplishment factor. Like after you finish working out, it's like I know for me, mm. in this, like during quarantine, when I at least worked out that day, I was like, look, I didn't do nothing all day, <laughs> all day. But at least, least at yeah. least I worked out. And them for days were I was struggling. I was yeah. like, good god, I was like, I just had to do like a lot of home workouts, so just go running outside. Yeah, in some weeks I will be pretty good, but in some weeks I just barely, I was like, come on, Leroy, mm -hmm. you gotta be better than Yeah, and if you feel comfortable, do you want to, like, tell a little bit about, like, your weight loss story? Oh, yeah, I don't mind. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, I, uh, pretty much since I was seven or eight, mm -hmm. um, was a pretty big kid, like, you know, just a big boy, most of my life, it was just like part of my upbringing, you know, mm -hmm. and I, uh, I remember when I got to college <laughs> their freshman 15 still hit me uh, and i was already a big boy yeah. yeah but i was already a big boy and so mm -hmm. at my heaviest i probably got up to like 315 mm -hmm. ish i would say i mean i got like pretty heavy set like i was already big and i got bigger mm -hmm. and then what ended up happening yeah i wanted to ask what was the change for you because freshman year you i saw you and you of course you were like bigger freshman yeah year. But like we came back from sophomore year, and I guess you worked out that whole summer. Yeah, and I was like, oh, well, hey, it was like uh, actually I started losing weight in the second semester of my freshman year. Oh yeah, we were talking about yeah, that. Yeah, so because you said it didn't like you didn't see the results until later. Well, I or? I was seeing it, but like people didn't know it because over the summer, uh -huh. what ended up happening was like well, back to a little bit. So like what ended up happening was like after first semester mm -hmm. we went to christmas break yeah and i was just like man i have to start taking care of myself better because it, mm -hmm. it wasn't a, like a a day one like oh i'm just i just need to do better it was just like i need to start taking care of myself better i gotta start eating better you know just gotta mm -hmm. like my mental health was so bad i was like i can't keep like you know treating mm -hmm. myself like this so i was like you know when you go back to school you're going to re you know reset start eating fruits and vegetables at every meal mm -hmm. you know and just and just be like take care of yourself you mm -hmm. know not necessarily just like come like doing a whole lifestyle change but just yeah, like it was just like the little thing the like little just, thing yeah. yeah and so I, I came back from uh christmas break started eating better starting to to like you know um eat fruits and vegetables every meal mm -hmm. you know i really was already a big water drinker but i started drinking only in only water and that mm -hmm. was it and and then i just um I started to lose weight from that. Sorry, first. I'm messing up. Like, literally drop it <laughs> while you're talking. Oh, okay, but yeah. But Not yeah, listening. so I started to, like, uh, just lose weight from just dieting. And mm -hmm. not necessarily dieting, but just eating, you know. Eating but, and then I lost, like, 10, 10 or 15, I can't remember, pounds. And then from mm -hmm. that, and then I started going to the gym. Mm -hmm. And then from then on, I started to, like, uh, the weight started flying off. Mm -hmm. So, like, by the end of the first semester, I had, like, lost... I got down to like 250 mm -hmm. by the end of the semester. I can't remember. It was like almost like 40 pounds, I would say, by mm -hmm. the end of the semester. Then over the summer, when I came back, when everybody was like, oh my gosh, leave her, was mm -hmm. because over the summer I lost like 60 pounds. Oh, okay. And that's because I was like, it's grinding. I was like, yeah. out every day, you know, running and eating mm -hmm. good. And 
I was just on like a whole like grind. Like, every, you know, I was just so motivated. Mm -hmm. And I just, cause I saw it flying off. And then by the time next semester came around, you know, I had lost like almost like a hundred something pounds by, you know, that uh, for, by that fall mm -hmm. again. Wow. And then, so, and then when I got back, I mean, kept going and I started like trying to tone and all that. Mm -hmm. and. Kind of pretty much ended up where I'm at now, okay. you know. Wow, that's a, so now I'm just trying to get like stronger and yeah, that's and a whole beat. story because yeah, that happened a lot happened in one year. Just so mentally, 2019 was like a whole growth. That was a growth big period. growth, yeah, yeah, big growth period for me. Even like the beginning of 2020 was like a big growth period. Mm -hmm. I feel like like the like that year and I would say like year and a half, like from beginning 2019 to like I would say probably like. August, like the beginning of this year, mm -hmm. you know, when school started again, was just like a huge growth period of me, like understanding more about myself. Yeah. You know, and, and I think that's the thing, like, um, and I really can't speak from experience because I've never had, you know, a big weight loss. Yeah. But from the people that I have talked to, it's never just about, you know, the way that you look. Mm. It's more of like a mental, it's like a whole mental journey. Yeah, it's like a whole, I mean, yeah, because like how I think now and how I approach like life <laughs> is just like mm -hmm. completely completely different than um like how i used to think and how i used to like talk and just but like, i mean i still like am like the same person my like, personality and all that so same mm -hmm. but like just how i approach things and like it's just things are so much different and so like the memories i have from like being bigger it's like there but they're like it's almost like cloudy because it's just it feels like a completely different person, you know? Mm -hmm. And just to clarify, like, for the viewers, like, this is not at all, like, shaming bodies. No, God, no. It's just, we're talking about, like... Person, this is my this personal... This is his personal, yeah. his personal Please journey. love yourself Yeah, regardless you are. wherever I wish you're I, at. If I could go back and tell myself, like, you are beautiful the way you are. Yeah. I feel like that would have been... I would have been in such a better mental space if I yeah. could really, like, believe that. Because mm -hmm. I just fought against that so hard because I just, you know, just didn't want... You know, but, like... That's also because I wasn't taking care of myself. Right. So, so to go along with like you know, of course, not everybody should be like you taking care of yourself is way more important than like the weight you're at. Right. Right. You know, it wasn't the fact that I was big and I was just big. I was a problem because I didn't take care of myself. Right. So right. I became like in the game more weight, and mm -hmm. the fact I just didn't care right. about like the way I look. I would just wear whatever, you mm -hmm. know, because like when you have low self esteem, there's like tight different types, you know, where you can like still do things, and there's type where it's like you don't even try. Right. Right. And that's where I was like I just mm -hmm. wouldn't put effort to like do things, you know. Mm -hmm. But now like I feel. I'm in such a better spot and that's good and i see just like the growth in you just mm -hmm. like i just love to see it because you're winning like you're really doing so well and like all the opportunities that um you're being given and i just love to see the growth blessed that's all i can say that's what i love too about college because it's like you meet people freshman year and then the even my freshman self oh, oh jesus yeah, that's what i'm saying we, yeah, all, we yeah. all have our yeah, little yeah just to see that growth, the growth that mm -hmm. everybody goes through that's what i'm saying like with like dating and all that's like at our age is like such a thing where it's like being so young it's like yeah. age makes such a big difference because mm -hmm. somebody that's 21 18 two different worlds two different say it again it two have, different like, worlds and you think you grown when you go you to college think you grown i don't even feel grown now at this I, point <laughs> to be real like at 20 i'm yeah like still I'm, figuring out 20, yeah so it's just like but wow. you're still figuring out and mm -hmm. that's no like this is a such a big like growing stage in our life you know right right and so, yeah just a lot happens in college so like, much happens so much growth and that's why I just like, you know, it's it's taking care and like really just giving yourself time to like grow and mm -hmm. and, and, and not get so down on yourself, you know, because yeah. like you can and stop your own growth from just staying so down all the time, you mm -hmm. know, so. Yeah, we talking about some real stuff, it's not <laughs> just about art, it really is like. It all connects. Yeah. I mean, it goes into my music. I mean, mm -hmm. I would say like my me improving my mental like state definitely helped me with like playing music mm -hmm. directly helped me with playing music because how i thought because i put so much value into like the music i create mm -hmm. and so when i'm constantly doing that and then my mental health is like my mental state is not good and i'm judging my value as a person and my being a human being off of like what right. i create musically yeah. then i'm just gonna be constantly down on myself because i'm constantly just judging who i am you know mm -hmm. Yeah. But my approach and how I feel, like, I don't judge myself in the moment mm -hmm. when I'm playing. Like, every note I play is not me judging myself. Like, what comes out is what's going to come out. And self-reflection can happen later, and, and and that improvement can happen later. But when I'm playing music in the moment, mm -hmm. I'm not going to judge myself. 
I refuse. Because yeah. then it's like, I'm, that's my ego. And that's the growth too. It's yeah, because like... you're putting your ego in front of the music. Mm -hmm. Like your ego is becoming bigger than the music you're trying to create. Yeah. And then that's a, that's that's selfish in its own way, mm -hmm. you know? Wow, that speaks. Yeah, so, and that's where I'm like, I, I refuse to be like that anymore. Because thinking like that, it's, just, it's like selfish. Because you're saying that how I feel is more important than the music I'm creating. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're sitting there worrying about what you're doing instead of what the music is saying. Yeah. You know, what you're trying to say. Because you're so worried about how you sound. So that's why I'm, and it's, I feel like it's the same way with art, you know. Oh, absolutely. Like, if you're painting and you're constantly judging every stroke absolutely. you do. Absolutely. There's a piece, if you follow my art account before this, before I rebranded, <laughs> you know that I hate, loathe self-portraits. And we were having this conversation when I was asking you to do the interview. Yeah. And when I tell you, I judge every single stroke of that mm. painting. And it's a, it looks good, but I just don't like it. Mm -hmm. I don't like it at all. And it's just like, Eileen, you did really well and, for your first self-portrait, but it's just like, I And refuse. the reason why you d don't like it is because like, while you were doing it, you, didn't, you already decided I, you yeah, didn't like it. Yeah, the feelings associated with making that painting mm -hmm. is not... And that's all you're going to see it as. Yeah, and he gave me some really good advice, y'all. Get you some artist friends. <laughs> you, just, you, you said something and it spoke because I'm you were like just her. like, you were just like, I think the first step is showing your mess, like what you think is messed up. Mm -hmm. Like just showing your art in the process because I was telling you like Lira, I hate, oh, you hate, I showing, hate yeah. showing people like the process of my painting because I'm like, let me just show them the finished product because when it's finished, it looks great. Mm -hmm. But in the midst of it, it's just like, this is so trash. Like, but that's, a, that's, a, that's the process what you want to think of yeah. it as, you know? It's like if I play and it's like, I sit there and like, when I make a mistake, I'm just like, oh, I'm so sorry. That was terrible. Yeah, like, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. And you hear me play, like, I'll mess up notes right in front of you. Really? And I would not I would not know this. I'm I, I like, will mess up notes right in front of you. Uh -huh. and, and it was like, just give me, you know, but that is what it is. Because yeah. it's like, I'm going to mess up, but that that doesn't take away from the beauty of it, you yeah. know? When you, like, the whole thing about being human is our imperfections. And that's what yeah. makes it beautiful. Yeah, but that really spoke. And I think later, I don't know if I did this before or after this conversation but i ended up posting like a thread or like a group of photos of like my artwork that i wasn't proud of and then like mm. had like my future artwork or like my growth now mm. and that's good. i was like this is beautiful <laughs> i love that mm -hmm. that's great so yeah growth in that too because i i feel as artists we were very hard on ourselves so we're hard worst on. critics oh always because you're constantly thinking about your art you're constantly mm -hmm. looking at other people's art you know mm -hmm. and so you're constantly like That's in a cycle of judgment of your own self and comparison mm -hmm. you know and so as an artist when you're constantly doing that you're asking yourself to be down you know because mm -hmm. you're constantly looking at somebody else and saying they're better than me yeah. You know? I think that's where comparison comes into play. Mm -hmm. So and Instead of looking in the mirror and being like, I am talented. I yeah. Am, and nobody will ever be And the thing you. is, there's always going to be somebody better than you. But what does but it mean to be better? Oh! Like, that's... And, say it again. And, and that's, Go ahead. I don't like that. I don't, I don't like that it. term. Like, what does it mean to be better? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, somebody can maybe technically be able to play more things on, like, your yeah. instrument, you know? Or maybe able to do, like, it. certain art that's, like, not something... But it's like, nobody will ever be able to create what you create. Uh-huh. Nobody's ever going to do it like we were no, yeah, and nobody's ever going to do like, like, yeah, yeah. Like, so that's what I had to realize. Yeah, too. and no, like, still learning. This yeah, is, this is a process, process. y'all. It's never finished. But nobody's ever going to be able. So, so you have to take value in the fact that the art you create is the art that you create. Mm -hmm. It's you, and nobody else, unless somebody can try to copy it. Yeah, but that's never going to be you. Right. And so you know that this terms that there's somebody that's always going to be better. It's like, eh, like what does that mean? You know? Yeah, because nobody will be ever be able to do it dude like yeah so, so so instead of saying oh that person better than me it just you know you don't have to say that at all mm -hmm. you know you just uh, you don't even speak on you it. appreciate the, the 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 art and the music they create right you know but you don't sit there and say i wish i could play like them right you know? because you never will yeah so you can never live up to you that. never be that yeah, yeah. and then you yeah. should never try to mm -hmm. you can emulate them and and want to have but like you should never say i need to be like them yeah. you know i need to be that good because mm -hmm. what does it mean to be good <laughs> and that's a whole right. other, you know that's a whole conversation it all applies like mm -hmm. you know so that's the way i i think now i guess i can do a little <laughs> right. update we'll do a little update this looks like a tornado right now but that looks good it's crazy is it changed so much between yeah the person and the last. it's definitely like a flow state happening i'm yes. just kind of going with like what's yeah, happening i like it though but i don't know I'm trying to I say like, like the two, two different sides and like yeah. in between i think it's like it's just like now i turn into like the clarity mm -hmm. of like 
the feeling of yeah the, it, and right, i like how abrupt this is yeah how abrupt because it's like you know it never entered my mind mm -hmm. you know and like so the, it doesn't touch it yeah, yeah you know it's like these are two different sides of heaven and here it's like where they kind of are blending mm -hmm. together that's cool mine kind of has a little bit of movement so I like it's yours. like this is like a tornado right and at this point even though it never entered the mind it's still connecting it's connecting like once it touched this all of this became very much a whirlwind like it was mm. unexpected mm. so like this is the thing that never entered it's like right? your thoughts running yeah, around yeah and this is the mind and the process and it's like we were in a straight line we were going i don't know if the camera can see this yeah. we were thinking like this was going to be it but now and this the direction that this is going in is not at all you know thinking of this mm. that makes sense i don't know uh, if that I makes think... sense but <laughs> ah, i get it i dig yeah, it yeah yeah I'm, like, I'm just kind of You're going. good. <laughs> you know I, I know. <laughs> he said, all right. All right. You don't, have don't, to. Don't, don't hype me up Don't now. hype me. That's funny. Shoot. I don't need to start doing that. <laughs> I'm wrong with that. <laughs> this is kind of flying into this. Do you see that? Or no? What? The... Do you see? Like, this is moving towards this. Yeah. Like, this is yeah. very much, like, movement. I feel like you shouldn't even have to explain. Mm hmm I it's... shouldn't. <laughs> you should know it. <laughs> They'll interpret it how they want to. Right, <laughs> that's true. That's that's the thing about art too. Is it the same for music? You interpret it the way that. You... In a way, I would say like. I mean, when you learn a tune, it's like, I think the reason why we there's so, there's like so many different coins on it, the same mm -hmm. song, but it could be have completely different feels, you right. know. And I think that's the great thing about learning like a song like you know, a song like this. You mm -hmm. can like Miles Davis has a recording of the song that's like very impressionistic. Like stays on like the the root mm -hmm. of sound of like the song mm -hmm. for like the first um for the main sections of the song mm -hmm. you know but and it's like very simple you know but it's beautiful mm -hmm. like it's so beautiful and so and then you can listen to like another recording where they do it completely differently you know wow. and so i think like the beauty of that is like the interpretation can be taken in so many ways is that why you were saying that um you listen to different types of recordings oh uh, yeah because you want to know like what different artists have done in the past too so you know mm -hmm. and like because there's no one way to play some any song any song that you learn there's no one specific there's never like one specific way that has that's to be played yeah and, th and that's the, the thing about music that makes it so great is that you don't have to play it the same way every single time uh -huh. like i can play uh, this, this that tune completely differently you know mm -hmm. and 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 that'll be great the way it is you know yeah so it's just everything can be interpreted differently and that's yeah. the real thing about creating this music that you can interpret the way you want to yeah you know and so that's why you should never judge it because it's you it's you you uh -huh. know yeah that's what i think that's what i'm growing to understand because i'm like i want to explain my art mm -hmm. but also sometimes you just kind of leave it I and i also want to see how other people interpret my yeah art. i feel like especially with art it's like mm -hmm. so much is up to interpretation Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of it. I mean, I love just looking at her and just like having like a title and I'm just like let my mind run with it. Yeah. You know? And then that's why when certain things that may not speak to me will speak to somebody else, you know? Mm -hmm. And the way how I play music may not speak to somebody as much as like somebody else, you know? Yeah. And, and but that's the great thing about it is that they don't have to accept how the way I play as like the end all be all, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's what I mean. I just love like human existence is like it's so awesome human because like there's so many different interpretations of life and how yeah. we live and just how it's i mean it's an i don't know i'm fascinated by it that's why i said yeah. be a therapist because like understanding how people think and live is just yeah and seeing like one situation and seeing how different people take, take it, it and yeah. just understand it or even just now like i was saying earlier you are receiving something from this music differently than i would mm -hmm. we're in the same space listening to the same music but since you're playing it and mm -hmm. i'm listening to it Complete, i have a different yeah. perspective as a listener and you have a different yeah and even when i'm listening to music i mm -hmm. mean it's like complete it's like different com compared to when i'm playing it you know yeah it's a different feelings i'll get like you know i could listen to it that i really love to play but then yeah. i listen to it, i'm like well <laughs> that was nice <laughs> it could be you know just you just never know like every every uh, like the emotions that you feel i mean i don't know it's just so hard because there's so much that uh, so many feelings and emotions that go mm -hmm. into like making art and just the human experience and con con connecting all of that together yeah and experiencing it and just 
it's fascinating to me. I mean, I love to be doing this because it just, it's like, it always boils down to like the human connection, mm -hmm. like expressing a life through art, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, just big about that, you know? Like when yeah. I play, I want you to feel like the emotion I, I, I'm trying to give, you know? Mm -hmm. And I want you just to feel something, you know, like right. whether I'm trying to have you feel happy, make you want to get up and, you know, yeah, dance, you know? Or... or just a feeling of like longing or just right. a feeling of just like love and beauty. Like I'm trying to have somebody feel all of that while I'm playing. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. so I think I'm almost done. Me too. I'm writing the title right now on this. Yeah. That kind of reminds me of the piece that's in the Uzi. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. I'm getting, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I'm getting excited. <laughs> okay, wait, you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, one, two, three. Yay! It never entered my mind. Tell us a little bit okay. about the finished product. Okay, so like, mm. <laughs> all right, so. For me, it's kind of, I was kind of in a very much like a flow with like, I kind of went wherever I wanted to in the moment. Mm -hmm. But the whole initial or whole basis of it is like, there's two different sides of like, I guess you can say your mind, right? And there's like the clarity of like, whiteness represents the clarity and then the red represents like love and like longing, like a very distinct emotion, right? Mm -hmm. And then the middle is where it, everything connects. And here's like the connectors between the two you know, like between the two sides. And then mm -hmm. the middle is like the blending of it all. And that's where like the feeling of, it never entered my mind and those, like the the feeling of like, long, of like longing and th all those emotions that go with like the feeling of losing somebody mm -hmm. and, and wanting them back and all that can kind of blends all together here. And then you have the connectors that still connect those two, you know? Mm -hmm. So they're in between. Yeah. The connections yeah, between two sides are, are in between all these mixed in emotions. So yeah, that Beautiful. wasn't BS at all. Beautiful. You know? <laughs> Beautiful. Um, yeah, I was thinking a lot about the sound and what I was hearing at the beginning. So more like chronologically, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. So I was feeling a lot of this when you started playing. Mm -hmm. And then as it was going towards um, the end, I was seeing a lot of this and a lot of oranges and like reds, like I was saying. And mm. yeah, so it's like a chronological sequence of music, but also the thought, the thought thunderstorm vacuum mm -hmm. thing, and the interruption. Mm. But thank you I guys. Mean, thank you for letting oh, me do this. I'm yeah. so honored. This is so fun. I thank had you for great coming time. on the show on the YouTube channel. Yes, of course. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching and comment down below you know. if you just think it looks like a thunderstorm. I don't know what you can call this. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Make sure that you like and subscribe. And we will see you in the next art-related activity, the next interview.